In Peninsula Apartment, Hong Kong, a veteran sergeant named Tai falls from a high floor and sustains serious injuries. He desperately tries getting up, but ends up breaking one of his legs. After some time, the police arrive on the scene and find Tai covered in blood. They also discover Ling, a senior inspector, unconscious on the seventh floor's corridor. Several police officers are then dispatched to find the perpetrator, but all in vain. Later, in the hospital, the police officers of Teams A and B argue with each other as the leader of Team B, George, accuses Inspector Ling of being responsible for Tai's brutal condition. After a while, Ling regains consciousness and finds himself in the hospital with his wife, Hazel, and their adopted son, Sonny. As the family is having an emotional moment, Ling's co-worker Ghost interrupts them and asks Ling about the murder. However, the latter seems to have lost his recent memories because of the serious impact on his head. That night, Ling and Ghost pay a visit to Tai, who is lying unconscious in the ICU. As Ling watches in disbelief, Ghost helps him recall the incidents from the previous days. He mentions that the entire police department department has been separated into several groups to solve the recent murder cases, but so far, there has been no breakthrough. The bloodletting serial killer has already killed two innocent citizens in the past month, but still, his motive is unknown. His killing techniques are equally gruesome. The killer drills holes into his victims' bodies, drains their blood, and leaves them to die. Furthermore, Ghost reveals that Tai and Ling were seen entering the Peninsula apartment at 3 p.m. the day before. According to the CC TV footage, Tai was 15 minutes earlier than Ling. However, the police are unable to determine why the two went to Peninsula Apartment without any backup. The next day, Ling heads to his workplace, the police headquarters, and informs his boss that he will continue to handle the murder case. The boss suggests that he rest and let George's team handle the case, but Ling is adamant on finding the killer. Later, Ghost approaches Ling in his cabin and starts discussing the case. He reveals that the first victim was a sports professor named Ken Chung, who is a decent man with no criminal record. The second victim was a 40-year-old comic artist named Juno Ma, who had no wife, money, or enemies. According to Ghost, the connection between the victims is the way that they died, as both were bloodlet using an electric drill. Additionally, both murders occurred near Jagged Island, the same place where Ling lives. The next day, Ling and Ghost visit Peninsula Apartment and start looking for some clues. Suddenly, Ling starts getting fragments of his memories back and recalls that he was on the ninth floor, not the seventh, when he saw Tai lying on the ground. In the next scene, the two begin investigating the ninth floor and soon discover a suspicious room. Inside, they find a deceased monkey that was also bloodlet. They also find the drilling machine used by the murderer. Upon returning back to the police quarters, Ling overhears his boss telling Ghost to drop the case and focus solely on Ling, indicating that the department is suspicious about him. After work, Ling returns home, and while he is chilling on the porch, he notices that Sonny's toy is damaged, with several holes in it. Startled, Ling asks his son about who damaged his toy, and the little boy replies, you did. Hearing this, he immediately heads to the storeroom and looks for his drill, but surprisingly, it is missing. Just then, he notices two drilled holes in the wall, and a bloody print from his own hand. The strange occurrences further confuse Ling, and though he tries his best to recall the past days, he fails. For the time being, he just hides the marks with paint. However, the very very next morning, he notices another bloody handprint next to the previous one, leaving him terrified. He then confronts his family and warns them not to leave the house. Hazel asks for the reason, but Ling gives her none. Later, he goes to a doctor to find out when he will regain his memory, as he is in great stress. He mentions that he is an honest person, but no one believes him anymore. When the doctor asks what worries him, Ling replies, his family. He reveals that two years ago, his son drowned in a pond because of his negligence, and since then, he hasn't been able to shake off that guilt. Now, all he cares about is the safety of his family, but with a murderer on the loose, it's hard not to worry. Hearing this, the doctor suggests that he undergo another blood test, as well as a brain scan. In the evening, Ling visits the morgue, where Ghost informs him that the drilled holes on the victim's backs are not random. They appear to have some pattern and are identical on both the bodies. Elsewhere, we see a female victim who has been kept inside a filthy looking room. Just like the other victims, she has been drilled on her back, and both of her eyes are nailed. Somehow, she manages to crawl out of the abandoned room, but as soon as she reaches the road, she is crushed by an oncoming truck. 
A few moments later, Ling, along with the police force, arrives at the scene and seals off the entire area. Surprisingly, even this time, the murder has taken place near Jagged Island. Following this, Ling returns home to find his sister, Minnie, who has just returned from the United States. He is happy to see his sister but forbids her too from going out of the house. The same night, Ling is thinking about the murder case when he notices his biological son's drawing of a rabbit with several dots on it. He quickly compares it with that of the victim's whole pattern and lo and behold, it matches. The next day, a stressed Ling visits the doctor and gets to know that his brain is normal but his blood contains a high concentration of the drug propanolol. The doctor further explains that while propranolol treats high blood pressure, it also causes dizziness and short-term memory loss. In fact, he hasn't been able to regain his memory because of the continuous intake of the drug. This shocks Ling as he doesn't recall taking any drugs. Later, Ling and Ghost go to the abandoned room from before in hopes of finding a clue. In the middle of the search, Ling spots a filthy looking man outside and begins chasing him down the woods. However, Ghost, who sees no one, believes that his friend has gone insane. Shortly after, the two head over to Ling's place. While they are having a drink, Minnie walks in with their childhood photos. Ling and Ghost go through the photos when suddenly, Ling comes across a picture of himself with four other kids. Behind the picture, there is mention about the first two victims. Taken aback, he checks the picture again and realizes that two of the kids are the victims. After a while, Ghost has a private conversation with Hazel and expresses his concerns about Ling. Just then, Sunny walks in with several drawings, one of which contains the same rabbit drawing from before. As soon as Ghost sees it, he puts it in his pocket. Later, while dining, he shows the drawing to Ling and inquires about it, but the latter is just as speechless. As a result, a disappointed Ghost storms out of the place. The following day, at police headquarters, one of the officers approaches Ghost and shows him some photos recovered from the female victim's place. Upon looking at them, he notices the same picture he saw in Ling's house. Just then, he receives urgent news and heads to the morgue. It turns out that Ty passed away last night, and with this, their best chance of finding the murderer is also gone. Following this, Ghost drives Ling to Jagged Island and demands to learn the truth. Ling believes that someone is framing him and that he is innocent, but Ghost doesn't buy it. Instead, he reminds Ling of the rabbit drawing and also shows him the same photo, revealing that the victims were actually Ling's childhood neighbors. Because of the damning evidence, Ghost mentions that he can't trust his friend anymore. He then starts arguing with Ling and accidentally gets knocked over the ledge, resulting in a deadly fall. Realizing what he has done, Ling rushes to help his friend, but even now, Ghost tries calling the authorities. This leaves Ling with no choice, so he reluctantly kills his friend. Later, at home, he receives a phone call from the police, who inquire about his whereabouts at the time of Ghost's death. Ling pretends to be unaware of the incident and lies that he was at home. However, the police department believes he is unfit for duty and makes him take a long leave. Despite Despite this, he remains committed to his mission and decides to apprehend the murderer one way or another. One day, as Ling is spending some alone time near a pond, he notices the same man spying on him. Realizing that he is the murderer, Ling immediately goes after him and an intense chase ensues. After a while, the murderer enters Sunny's school and apprehends him, but as soon as Ling arrives, he runs away. After the incident, Ling returns home and closes all the doors while keeping an eye out the window. Minnie asks about the matter, but Ling decides to explain everything after it's over. A while later, he walks upstairs and discovers the same photo stuck on the closet. He examines it closely and realizes that he had bullied one of the boys severely in the past. He used to call him Beggar Boy and even called his mother Dirty. Just then, Ling notices Sonny smiling at him from the balcony. Surprisingly, the little kid starts talking in a grown-up voice voice. Taken aback, Ling asks if he is a ghost, but Sonny reveals that he is none other than the beggar boy. It turns out that he has a disease called anti-aging sickness, which caused his body to stop growing after a certain age while keeping his intelligence normal. Sonny further reveals that he knows everyone from Ling's family because they share a common father. Following this, he starts narrating about the past when his mother brought him from Southeast Asia to find his father. But when they arrived at the father's house, they learned learned that he had remarried a wealthy woman and had two children. Despite this, Sonny and his mom tried convincing the father to let them stay, but he refused, forcing them to live on the streets. From that day onwards, their lives began to deteriorate by the day. They got a shady house to live in, but his mother had to sell herself every day to meet the household necessities. Then, one day, she passed
passed away due to a venereal disease, and then it was just Sonny, all by himself. This is when he decided to use his tiny frame to his advantage. At first, he was adopted by a kind family, but he could only stay for a short time or else they would discover his sickness. In order to survive, he then began selling their babies to a child trafficker. Eventually, with time, he grasped the mechanism of evil doings. Hearing all this, a confused Ling inquires as to why he is doing this, and little Sonny replies that he simply wants Ling to experience the feeling of being wronged. He then reveals that he isn't doing this alone, but rather, he has a partner. The murderer is the same person Ling chased after earlier. His name is Mang, and he has early aging sickness. Because of this, he ages quickly, but has extremely good intelligence and agility. Then, Sonny starts explaining about the incident at Peninsula Apartment. He deliberately fed Ling with a lot of poisoned cakes, causing him to lose his memory. He then called Tai into the apartment, pretending to just be lost. Soon after, he texted Ling, claiming that his pistol is on the ninth floor. When Tai reached it first, Mang attacked him, drilled his body, and threw him from the seventh floor of the apartment. He then knocked Ling unconscious and dragged him to the same floor. Ling questions why he wasn't killed, and Sunny replies that he wants to imprison him because some punishments are worse than death. He also reveals that he killed the three victims just so he could frame him. Enraged, Ling attempts to kill Sunny, but as he is about to do so, his wife and Minnie intervene. He desperately tries to explain about the little man's reality, but as expected, no one believes him. Later that evening, George arrives at Ling's house and transports him to the police station for investigation. George questions him about the murders, but Ling remains silent. Hence, due to the lack of evidence, he is released on bail. One day, Ling drags Sonny to a floating platform in the middle of the sea to scare him. However, it turns out that it was Sonny's plan all along to get Ling out of the house so that Mang could murder his family. Hearing this, Ling rushes back home, but it's too late. Mang has already executed Hazel. The sight of his wife's horrific death breaks Ling from the inside, and he starts crying uncontrollably. But soon, he gets up and rushes outside for vengeance. When Ling steps out of the house, Sonny locks the door from inside. Just then, Mang arrives with his drilling machine, and the two start fighting. While they're at it, Sonny makes his way out. Meanwhile, Ling manages to overpower Mang and brutally drills him to death. After killing one perpetrator, he heads out to kill Sonny and eventually corners him on a cliff. But before he can strike, the cops show up with his sister. Ling tries explaining that the child is a monster, but no one listens to him. Now, with no options left, he proceeds to kill Sonny, but one of the cops shoots him down. In the last scene, we are shown that Ling has been incarcerated in a prison. He has been found guilty of six murders, two of whom were his own friends. The movie ends as Sonny sits near the sea, delighted that he successfully completed his mission. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.